You not only are going to get the benefits of building muscle and burning calories and burning body fat, but you're going to get better at these movements, getting better at these movements, which again, plays into the whole thing that we talk about all the time, which is, man, it feels so much easier in my 40s to stay in shape than it did. Well, yeah, part of that is because I can go into a workout, know exactly what I need to do and get the most out of that workout because I've practiced and it's for not so just, long. And I'm going to help here mm -hmm. with that because some people might be listening and say, oh, it's because you can push yourself harder now. No. No. It's not about pushing harder. It's about knowing how to do the technique in the best way possible. Is a quarterback going to throw farther because he knows how to throw harder all of a sudden or because he knows how to throw better? That's right. So same thing with exercise. We tend to relegate strength training to, oh, damage the muscle and build. And we forget that they're techniques. We forget that squatting is a technique, curling is a technique, overhead yeah. pressing is a technique. No, 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 no. They're all techniques. And the better you are at the techniques, the more you're going to get out of them. One of the best ways to get better at exercise is to do it often. If I could work out more and recover faster, I'm going to get better results. Well, uh, this strength training tool allows you to do that. You can work out, people watching right now, literally, whatever you're doing now, you can work out like 30% more with bands and it'll equal about the same amount of damage you're causing now to your body. But now you're working out more and more often and you get all that extra practice. All right, today's workout program giveaway, the brand new, just about to be launched MAPS program. MAPS, bands, this is a band-based workout program for eight weeks. It's advanced, this is not a beginner program. It's the only MAPS program that you work out every single day. And yes, you will hit PRs and you will build new muscle. Not joking, listen to the episode where you break it down and explain why. Anyway, you can get free access to this new program, but you gotta do this. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll give you the new program, Maps Bands. Everybody else, this is the launch period, which means it's going to be discounted and you're going to get some free stuff. So check this out. It's going to retail for $97, but right now you can get Maps Bands for $67 and we're going to throw in two free eBooks, the Ultimate Bodyweight Training Guide and Quick Meals for Health and Fitness. It's our first cookbook. So again, $67, you get Maps Bands and you get the two free eBooks. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. One of the most effective yet most overlooked tools for building maximum strength, maximum muscle, mobility, and enhancing fat loss, believe it or not, are resistance bands. I know a lot of people think resistance bands and they think, oh, it's good for convenience, it's good for beginners. Yeah, that's true, but here's something else that's true. For advanced lifters, it can often be the missing piece that will take your body to the next level. By the way, the data and the studies over the last decades, literally five decades, proves this. If you've never done a full cycle of band training, you are missing out. You will hit new PRs in all of your core lifts if you listen to this episode and apply it carefully. Bands can be quite advanced with how they get you stronger and build muscle. So I love, one of my favorite things to do on the podcast is to take an overlooked method of muscle building or strength building or fat loss yes. and bringing it to people and saying, you know, a lot of people don't use this the way that it can be used, but check this out. And then we present like, uh, oh, this, this could be a game changer. Bands are that. Bands by far of all the non-traditional strength training tools, uh, it possesses those qualities. And the evidence is very clear. This is not me just postulating. This isn't mm. our anecdote. Like, uh, bands played a massive role in revolutionizing strength sports, both Olympic and powerlifting strength sports. Now we're starting to see bodybuilders use them because they're unique in how they 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 trigger trigger muscle building. So if, if you don't use them, it's like, dude, I love resurfacing a lot of these ideas. Especially, I mean, I went down the road of isometrics, and I, you know, definitely received the benefits from that and figured out like how impactful they are on performance and how impactful they are on rehabilitation and all that. And actually the rehabilitation side is what led me to bands, but then I started applying um, these predator bands. So predator bands, it they had like multiple bands stringed up to handle. So it was like a lot more resistance than what I was lifting before in, you know, the rehabilitation uh, setting. And it was like a completely different experience. And my muscles were 
were uh, benefiting from it like far beyond what I thought. Yeah. I was going to bring up um, isometrics also. What is it about? Because I would I would put those two kind of in the same category. They both are these forgotten tools yeah. to building muscle that we've they've been around for a very long time. For some weird reason, both of them have made their way into the uh, rehab beginner category and have remained there. And you do see, so, you know, you bring yeah. up like muscle, like in the bodybuilding community right now, it's super popular and it has been popular since I was competing to use bands on machines and stuff. Yeah. That was kind of like how I would, I would tease competitors. Cause it's like, Oh, they're, they're finally getting to the, the research that's around mm -hmm. the benefits of this. And then this is their way of integrating it. And it's like, why is it that those two things, both isometrics and bands, have remained popular in the rehab and beginner world, but are less popular in the bodybuilding world. Like, I, I, as, val as valuable as they are, wh why is that? Okay, because the one of the most science-based uh, segments of the strength training, I don't know, market uh, or field. So if you look at strength training as this, it's this huge market, mm -hmm. everything from rehab to advanced strength training, bodybuilding, powerlifting, Olympic lifting, athletics, okay? If you look at that as like a, uh, as a graph, um, if you look at the benefits of things like bands and isometrics, but let's stick to bands. If you look at the benefits, one of the top benefits is they're very safe. Yes. So you have physical therapists, which are very science-based. So physical therapy is constantly evolving. It's uh, a well-funded space. Physical therapists are some of the best people in the, in, in the world at rehabbing injury. And so they need to use strength training because strength training is phenomenal at rehab rehabbing. In fact, that's yeah. the primary form of exercise they use to rehab, but free weights and even machines can pose certain challenges for people. Bands are very safe. And so they said, Oh, here's strength training and it's safe. Let's use this. And then what happens is it takes a long time for everybody else to adopt it. Yep. Um, but what's interesting is this, when you look at like, uh, government funded strength training. You look at the, you know, the, the 20th century, uh, with the Soviet union during that time, the Olympics, it's always been like this with the Olympics. It's always been ways for countries to display their, their, their power or how advanced they are. So like Germany during the time of, you know, Nazis, they want to show how great they were. Of course, the famous story of Jesse Owens coming on and just mopping the floor with everybody, right? The, yeah. the American, oh, yeah. um, the Soviets funded, uh, the Olympic sports, because it was their way of showing the world how awesome communism was. So they funded strength training and they had top scientists studying strength training and they studied things like herbs and supplements and hormones. They were some of the first athletes to use steroids and strength training techniques and programming. They used bands well before everybody else and their athletes were kicking the crap out of everybody else. They dominated Olympic lifting for a long time. It wasn't until the Iron Curtain came down that our coaches went there and some of their coaches came here and they came back and they brought back some of their techniques. Westside Barbell was one of the first strength training circles in the U S to use bands. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why they became so dominant in powerlifting. Mm -hmm. Nobody was using bands in their training, uh, in America before that. Um, and they learned it from the Soviet. So, yeah, but I mean, that's where you find most of the most effective methods and techniques. It's either going to come from like astronaut training or from like a rehabilitation protocol as being too like they have to have like the most impactful the most effective way to build muscle possible uh in those like crazy extreme environments but also with the in the rehab setting it's like you have all this money from insurance you yeah. have all these eyes and and um, you know, the scientific study and the, and, uh, you know, the clinical setting, uh, is very like, like meticulous about, uh, you know, like researching this whole thing from stem to stern, uh, whether or not they're getting success with each patient. And so I think that, like you said, it takes a while for this to now trickle into sports, which is then the next sort of venue. And then after sports kind of makes its way into, uh, the general. So then it is your, your theory, your guys, both your theory then, that. Uh what we're seeing right now, which is the, the popularity of bands being used on hammer strength machines and stuff like that in the body is just kind of, is like the beginning of it getting more popular. Like, do you guys yes. foresee mm -hmm. more, more programming, more, more emphasis put 
on bands being utilized for even like your your strength uh your strength for sure they had bad pr before so typically the way it starts is this it starts in rehab then it moves to strength sports uh especially the ones that have you know strong organizations why because strength sports are objective you either lift more you don't so it's like this works this doesn't work bodybuilding is usually last because it's so subjective. Um, diet can play a big role. Did you peak? You know, genetics and how you look. It's, like I said, it's very subjective. But they usually follow, right? They'll see what the strength guys and girls are doing. And then they'll say, oh, let's apply some of these techniques. And then it gets into, you know, sports and all that stuff. And in high-level athletics, they'll, they'll look at the stuff from a rehab perspective. But they're typically apprehensive at applying brand new things because if it's, it ain't broke, then don't fix it. And you don't want to mess up your top athletes. Right. But once one team applies it and does well, then it starts to kind of spread yeah. um, like wildfire. But there was bad PR with bands because bands hit the market and the way they advertise bands, and I get this, there's a bigger market if you're looking at targeting the average person who doesn't have space, doesn't have equipment, and doesn't have much yeah, time. Well, here, convenience. Convenience, use easy. bands. Um, the smaller market is the hardcore, like build muscle and, you know, improve your performance market. So it got BP bad PR and that's what it got relegated to, which is okay. It's true. Extremely convenient. You could travel with bands anywhere. They're very low risk of injury. We'll get to that. Um, you know, you can attach them at different points. So it's, you know, it's easy to use or whatever, but a lot of people because of that thought this is not advanced mm. train tool. If I just train with bands, I'm going to lose muscle. It's not going to, this is nothing can be further from the truth. In fact, uh, if you've never done a full, just pure band training block and we'll get into why, and we'll get into all the, the, mm -hmm. the nuts and bolts, but if you've never done a full six or eight week or 10 week training block of just bands, you have no idea, literally no idea what you're missing. It, it's one of the most effective ways that you can, uh, break through plateaus and hit new PRs is by simply focusing on this unique form of resistance, which, you know, we're, we're going to kind of get into. So. Well, and, and in terms of piggyback on sort of the bad PR, uh, so it, initially, like, when it hit the general public, they were just offering, like, these tube bands, yeah, yeah, right? And so, like, if you get somebody that's, like reasonably strong they're going to end up inevitably the the band's going to fray and it's they're just going to snap in half they're going to have a bad experience and then this is the association that sort of like leads from there when in fact you know they've innovated quite substantially on bands to where they layer it now so it's like super thick you can get ones that are like two three hundred uh, pounds of resistance like there's they, they offer a lot more um uh, robust type bands now that you can get on the market. Yeah. So I think it's not just bad PR. I also think it's poor application. Like, and it reminds me again, I'm going to keep going back to my experience with the introduction of like isometrics, like, you know, isometrics were the, the, the plank and the, the, the wall sit, you know, and yeah. every, every trainer did it as a, as a, as a time killer for clients, like the application yeah. of ice. I mean, and look at all the reviews that we've got back from symmetry people, the reviews that we've had for symmetry is one of our best selling programs. It's done wonders for all of our clients in there. We have a whole phase of isometrics that we've built in there. I feel the same thing when I think of bands, when I see bands, I see people using it as kind of a warm up tool every now and then, or you see them strapping it to machines. It's not really programmed in. They're not really comparing it to something else to where they can actually measure the progress. So I really think a lot of it is not only bad PR, it's also poor application on the programming of, of it and utilizing it correctly to where we can really measure like, oh shit, like- You are 100% yep. correct. If yep. you look at all of the resistance training uh, tools and methods, all of them have uh, strengths and weaknesses. All of them have unique qualities. It, you have to program your workout to maximize the strengths and minimize the weaknesses or take advantage even of the weaknesses. That's how you maximize the power of them. So free weights versus machines versus body weight versus bands. If I trained a pure free weight workout or a pure machine workout or a pure body weight workout or a pure band workout, the programming is going to change because each one of those has their own values and each one has its own kind of weaknesses. So you have to change the programming. Everything from reps and frequency and volume changes because uh, each one works the body a little bit differently. That's if right. you don't do it that way, you're just throwing an exercise. Yeah, sprinkling and it all in. And it mm -hmm. you don't really get the, the, the value. Yeah. One of the most valuable thing about bands, and this is what power lifters and Olympic lifters and, the, you know, like I said, Westside Barbell understood about bands is they have a unique strength curve. Mm -hmm. There's no form of resistance 
that matches the strength curve of or resistance curve of a band. A band is easy when you first start pulling it, it gets harder the longer you pull it. So how does this apply to, first off, it's different, it's novel, right? So it's different. But what what's so unique about that? What's so special about that? A lot of lifts, a lot of your lifts, you are weaker at the bottom, stronger at the top. Mm -hmm. A lot of your lifts are like this, if not most of them. I was gonna say, which ones are not? I mean, that's what I think is most unique about the strength uh, the, the strength curve is that it follows the body's natural strength In curve. Fact, I can't Nothing think else of, does that. Yeah, I can't think of one that wouldn't be like that, right? I'm sure there is one out there, but you could reverse the band. But my point is, you have a, a something that gives you less or more resistance depending on how much you stretch it out. Yeah. So what does this mean? Well, that means like if I'm doing a barbell squat and the max I could do, let's say is 300 pounds, that's the most weight I could lift at the weakest part of the rep. Which is mm -hmm. the bottom. Not the, the strongest part of the rep. Like if you told me how much could you squat going down four inches, it's way more than 300 pounds. Yeah. I'm limited to 300 pounds because at the bottom where I'm weakest, that's the most I could lift. Once I get past that bottom part, the, the weight moves. Well, with the band, theoretically, I could get a band that's 300 pounds at the bottom, but as I squat up and get stronger, the band gets harder. Mm -hmm. So it's 300 pounds, 305 pounds, 310 pounds, three, all the way up to, let's say, 350 pounds, where now I'm still hitting a PR or maxing out throughout the entire rep. That trains your body in a way that weights simply can't. This is why the power lifters figured this out and were breaking records. By the way, my, my I don't know if you guys have a personal story with this, but at one point, I wanted to hit, this was years ago, I wanted to hit a 600 pound deadlift and I wanted to hit a 430 pound squat. And I was, I don't remember where I was plateaued, but I was plateaued for a while. And then I started going in and researching powerlifting and going through and seeing what their training methods and what they did. And what stood out to me was the use of resistance bands. Yeah. That resistance bands got me to add something significant, like 30 or 40 pounds to each lift, simply by programming bands in them, attaching them to the bar even, and adding that kind of resistance curve. And I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that this, this tool was able to increase my strength so much. And of course the muscle followed. This is a very unique thing about bands um, that allows it to develop your strength and muscle in ways that other forms of resistance can't. Now, again, this is not superior to other forms. It's different. That's again, what makes it so special. Yeah. So I keep kind of uh, thinking about these parallels between isometrics and bands and even with the strength curve, like, so one thing like isometrics, you, you want to focus on each part of that range of motion where you're weakest and also your strongest, but you want to be able to hold those specific angles and generate this intrinsic force. So I'm, I'm kind of tensing my muscles and trying to generate as much uh, strength internally just for my body. Uh, let's say, you know, in the beginning portion of the rep, but also in the middle, also at the end. Um, and so you're, you're trying to produce that intrinsically, whereas the band now you have that extrinsic kind of resistance to capture that and, and take you through, you know, that challenging like it challenges the end ranges a lot more so uh, than say your, your conventional dumbbells. and Totally. Barbells. Totally. One of my, my, another point that I love about bands is it encourages, because sometimes people, when they use free weights, they don't do a good job of maintaining constant tension. Free weights have a tendency to swing That's right. or drop a weight. You can't do that with bands. If you do, you're going to, you're going to snap back down real quick. If you do a lateral with the band, because it's pulling so hard at the top, you are encouraged to do a slow negative. Whenever I used to train clients with just bands, I would always marvel at all of a sudden, look at my client who I've been trying to get to do a four negative forever and they have the hardest time doing it. Naturally, he's doing it with bands because you try doing a fast <laughs> rep with a band and it's you know, all the way down. It's, real hard. It's, yeah, it comes back. So then you just naturally, like you get up to the rep and then you kind of control it on the way down. Every exercise uh, encourages this constant tension and there's plenty of studies to show that the, 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 the type of tension that you maintain makes a significant uh, impact on how much muscle you build. It's actually one of my favorite ways to teach exactly that. That's so I, I've talked on the show many times, you know, that's like one of the things I always say is challenging people to actually do a four second negative because mm -hmm. we just don't have a tendency to do it. So I had clients that no matter how much I communicated, it, I couldn't get them to do it until I started to, to utilize bands. You asked about personal stories. You know, I actually don't have a good personal story for myself because like many things <laughs> that I did as a coach, I was a much better coach mm -hmm. at coaching other people than myself. And it wasn't until I was traveling around to, to clients' houses when I was doing private training um, and I was forced with a client who had nothing but bands. 
you know, and I remember being like, oh my God, like I wanted her to get like a set of dumbbells or get something going. And, you know, she basically challenged me. Can you, can you design a program for me to, you know, get me to, to her, she wanted to lose some weight tone or, you know, her words tone up. Um, that was the goal. And I remember being like, you know, of course I'm going to take on the challenge. Yeah. Yeah, I can. But I remember being blown away. You know, of course I understood what I needed to do programming wise, but never at that point had I really truly applied nothing but bands and seen like in the back of my head, I have to admit that there was a bit of me that was like in doubt, like, Oh, you know, there's totally she's probably not going to see the same kind of results as if I actually had all this. And I was already kind of making the excuses on what I'd have to overcome when she doesn't see the change, but she actually had phenomenal results yep. enough that I was like, Oh shit. Like I don't need nothing but no, a set of bands. The constant tension and the encouragement of the controlled negative. Uh, when I, when I watch people's form, when they're working out with bands, their tendency is to have better form. Mm -hmm. It literally, it's it forces like, it. it almost forces better technique and yeah. better form, which is one of the reasons why I think it's so valuable because you do a movement with a band, your form is going to be a little bit better just because the band itself uh, makes you get better form and encourages it as you're using it. Now, I, I, I've told this story before, but when I grand opened the, 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 the 24 fitness on Santa Teresa, we opened the cardio area before we opened the machine and free weight area but we were allowing members to come in. And I remember asking them like, well, you know, what are we gonna do about the personal trainers? I'm like, well, you guys can use bands, same thing. I thought, oh crap. Yeah. Okay, yeah. like bands, like it's gonna be really tough. Um, we sold more personal training and got more people re-enrolling during that period of time than, uh, than I had done in other gyms with other equipment. And the number one piece of feedback I got from clients was they loved the band workout. In fact, when we opened up the rest of the gym, a significant portion of them say, can I just stick to the bands? And then so many of my trainers became uh, these evangelists for bands where mm -hmm. a, a lot of them were like, oh man, we got to figure this out. All right, I guess I'll try and work with. A lot of them came to me and were like, Sal, I prefer training clients this way. Like they're getting great results. Um, I didn't think that these, these tools were that effective. So same thing. We yeah. saw this firsthand um, mm -hmm. with everybody. The next point, and this I think is one of the most overlooked benefits and values of bands. This is why I use bands in the first MAPS program, MAPS Anabolic, for trigger sessions. Right, it's the whole trigger session concept. This right here uh, is something that a good coach or a good trainer, so a good coach or trainer will look at a form of exercise, will look at its strengths and weaknesses and know how to maximize both. One of the quote unquote weaknesses, it's not a weakness, of bands is it doesn't cause as much damage as uh, free weights do to your body. Like you do a set of curls with bands, even heavy ones. You do a set of curls with dumbbells. Dumbbells, you get sore. The bands, you don't get a sore. Right. And everybody knows this. Anybody who's ever trained hard with bands, even power lifters know this. They know that, you know, a max effort uh, lifts with bands just way more forgiving on the body than if you were to use, let's say, chains or free weights. Um, and, and nobody can figure out why. Even I can't figure out why. It, you know, I try to think about what's happening in the body, but uh, there's a lot of mystery there. But it's true. It causes less damage. And a lot of people say, well, that's that's a bad thing. You can't send as loud of a muscle building signal. No. It's this an is, advantage. This is an advantage when you change the programming. So less muscle damage means I can work out way more. Yep. I can work Pile out- Pile on the volume. I can work out more frequently. I can do more sets. I can hit body parts more often. And now I get this benefit of this frequent stimulation of muscles. I get this benefit of frequent practicing of techniques of exercises- there's, you cannot work out as much with free weights as you can with bands, even when the intensity is high. Mm -hmm. You have a high intensity band workout, high intensity free weight workout. You could do like one third more frequency and volume with the bands than you can with the free weights. And then there's all the benefits of that more calorie burn, better for your body, practicing the technique. Oh, people who love working out use bands. You can work out like crazy with bands and it's not going to beat you up. You know, listen to you say that right now, it makes me realize that that's the other piece of why this didn't get popular. We, we were talking about the the poor application of it and uh, whatever the other reason that we we said that people do, didn't, for some reason, adopt it. That has to be the other major reason. You know, oh, bad PR is the other one you said. Yeah. Bad, bad PR, and then I said poor application. The third is because it doesn't get you hella sore. Like, right. Like other workouts do, mm. and how long, how how and much that was the gauge? Of for course, all workouts, I mean, yeah. even as coaches and trainers, which um, we're all guilty of, of measuring the effectiveness of a, a workout with a client based off of how sore they yep. got. I mean, that's still a stigma today uh, that we're trying to. And which, if you do a band workout like this and you expect, oh, I'm going to be crushed like I just did a high volume squat workout, and you don't feel that way, you go, oh. 
it doesn't work as well. Yeah. So I bet you, especially if you do a body part split, one hundred percent. That's the other reason why it's not as popular is that there still is that idea that how sore you are is how good of a workout that this you is got. how again this is how trigger sessions were created. But I experimented initially with trigger sessions with high intensity, and what I would do is I do, let's say I only hit chest twice a week. I figured out that if I did uh, four days a week, but two of those days were with just bands. It was, I got great results and I didn't overtrain. If it was free weights, way too much. So let's say you're in the gym and you're following a program and you're doing, let's say flies and you stop two reps short of failure because that's the programming. Well, you use bands, go to failure. Now you can go to failure and you're not going to create as much damage. Or let's say you did three sets. Now you can do six sets. You can triple the volume or double the volume. Uh, are you going to get the same results? No, no, no. You actually get better results, especially if this is new for you because there's something about frequency that is special. There really is something about practicing exercises over and over again that is outside of the simple muscle building signal, you know, repair uh, model that is something special. So if you've never done anything like this, you know, you could go literally, if, you're, if you've been working out for a while um, and you're pretty consistent, you could do a seven day a week intense band workout that normally would fry you with free weights and machines. And all of a sudden you're recovering better than you did before. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, I actually don't think that that's something uniquely special. I think that's just something that's overlooked when we talk about lifting weights. For some reason, if you talk about playing the guitar or being good at your craft or being a good artist or being a good basketball player, the thought of the more you practice, the more you're going to get out of it, the better you're going to be at your thing. So this idea that that same thing would not apply to resistance training is funny to me. So I don't think it's special at all. I think is, I think, you know, and Arnold used to say this, right? Arnold used to say he could go in the gym and get more out of one exercise than somebody who spent an hour doing 20 different exercises. That's because he's an expert at it. And that's the truth because he's so good at connecting the right muscles, creating as much intensity and intrinsic force as he possibly can. So he does that one set and he gets tremendous value. There's no difference in that. And then the average person, if you practice these movements and you do them frequently, you not only are going to get the benefits of building muscle and burning calories and burning body fat, but you're going to get better at these movements, getting better at these movements, which again, plays into the whole thing that we talk about all the time, which is, man, it feels so much easier in my forties to stay in shape than it did. Oh yeah. Part of that is because I can go into a workout, know exactly what I need to do and get the most out of that workout because I've practiced and it's not for so ju- long. And I'm going to help here mm-hmm. with that because some people might be listening and say, oh, it's because you can push yourself harder now. No, no, it's not about pushing harder. It's about knowing how to do the technique in the best way possible. That's all it is. Again, using the analogy of, uh, of, of athletics, like uh, is, is a quarterback going to throw farther because he knows how to throw harder all of a sudden? Mm-hmm. Or because he knows how to throw better. That's right. So same thing with exercise. We tend to relegate strength training to, oh, damage the muscle and build. And we forget that they're techniques. We forget that squatting is a technique, curling is a technique, overhead yeah. pressing is a technique. No, 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 no. They're all techniques. And the better you are at the techniques, the more you're going to get out of them. One of the best ways to get better at exercise is to do it often. I'll use this example right here. If we took two people who did the exact same muscle building signal to the body, but one of them trained once a week, the other one trained four days a week. You're going to get better with the four days a week simply because they're moving more, burning more calories, and practicing more. Yep. They're going to get more out of the exercise. They're going to get results faster and better because they're able to practice more often. One of the biggest, for this is for, again, for advanced lifters. One of the biggest limiting factors for people watching right now who really love working out, I guarantee you, is you just can't work out as much as you want. You know that you're limited by your recovery. I mean, there's a lot of fitness fanatics like, gosh, if I could get better results by working out twice as much, I would, but then I just overtrain. In fact, right now, I'm teetering on overtraining. That's always the limiting factor. In fact, I mean, look, uh, one of the number one ways to sell supplements is to say that they do what? They help recovery. Yeah. <laughs> they increase recovery. Why do fitness fanatics love things that help boost recovery? They can work out more. They know intuitively, if I could work out more <clears throat> and recover faster, I'm going to get better results. Well, uh, this strength training tool allows you to do that. You can work out, people watching right now, literally, whatever you're doing now, you can work out like 30% more with bands and it'll equal about the same amount of damage you're causing now to your body. But now you're working out more and more mm-hmm. often and you get all that extra practice. The, the next point that I love that it also encourages is it also encourages the isometric portion of the exercise. The squeeze. Because the, the squeeze at the end. So when you get to that 
in range uh, with the bands, you kind of pause. It just it, it's you actually have to. yeah, it's just it's like how you talked. To, to pause. It is just like you guys talked about the the natural like resisting the way back. You also have this natural when you get to the end of the band, you squeeze the muscle in it, and there's so much value in squeezing and contracting in an isometric portion of the exercise, and just another area that people neglect to incorporate into their training, and so the bands kind of forces that technique. Yeah, I think of it like if I'm just having an example of an isometric contraction where I'm telling somebody to make a fist and they're just squeezing as hard as they can. This is a hard concept a lot of times for people to really understand. Like I'm trying to recruit as many muscle fibers as possible and like, you know, shuttle them all to this, you know, one action that I'm trying to produce, which is just to squeeze as hard as I can making a fist. Now, if I have a rubber band pulling me away from this position, that gives me feedback that I'm, I'm fighting against. It's way more relaxed. Relatable. It's way less esoteric. It's yeah. not yeah. something that like I have to conjure up in my mind. Like this is a real force that's pulling me. Oh, I have to ground myself. So in terms of teaching it, but also get the same benefits, it actually enhances that muscle recruitment process even more. Look, anybody who's advanced with strength training, who understands how to do the right, uh, how to use a squeeze right at the end of a rep, will say this. When you get to the top of your curls, squeeze hard. Now, why do they say that? Because you're strongest at the end. If I'm curling a dumbbell, it's hard, but at the top, it's, I can hold more weight at the top than I can at, the, than I can at this kind of bottom range uh, of motion. So I have to add more force to make the isometric effective. Well, guess where bands are the hardest? At that part. Yep. It naturally yep. encourages a harder isometric squeeze. And why does it encourage it? One, the tension's highest at the top, so mm -hmm. you're going to get all those muscle fibers. Two, if you don't hold at the top, here's what happens with the bands. Boink. <laughs> yeah, well, you're going to get this really fast, jerky motion. So you're encouraged to lateral, up, oh, pause for a second, control the negative, or fly, oh, control the negative, or a lunge, or overhead press. You're encouraged get that, to get that isometric squeeze at the strongest part of the rep, which then studies have shown, and bodybuilders have known this for a long time. They've just done it with free weights on their own. This recruits more muscle fibers. The more muscle fibers you can recruit with an exercise, the more muscle fibers that grow. Which, yep. by the way, this is the main, I would say, only value that the... So when you see somebody, when you and it's always the, the bodybuilder dude or chick that's wrapping the bands around the hammer strength machine, yeah. this is the value that's of it. That's the value. It's when they do that row and they're at the end, when it's really easy and you just want to flat back, because the bands are wrapped around the, the weights, they got it all stuck to the machine, they're having to squeeze and then resist it the way back. Yeah. That's literally the point of doing that. I don't know if they know that, why they're putting it on there, but that's what the value that they're getting from that mm -hmm. is they're learning how to get the isometric squeeze at the end of the rep because they're getting tension with the band. And then it, and so they don't just let it go flying back because the bands were going to whip it back. They're having to resist on the way back. That's that right. is the value of that. That's right. All right. So next is what I think is going to apply to most people listening and watching this right now, which is, and, and we all know this, right? We all know that, novelty stimulates muscle growth. Okay. So long as it's in the context of strength training, if it's new, you got and your body needs to learn it or it's different for your body, then you're going to see some accelerated gains. So this could be a new rep range. This could be a different tempo or rest period or different exercises. But for a lot of people watching this, I'd say over 90 something percent, I guarantee you most people have not done an entire training block of just bands. This is strength training. This oh, is pure strength training. You. Uh, th there's nothing more novel than what you're about to, to do if you do this. If you do the next eight weeks of pure band strength training, it's going to be so novel to your body, you're going to see some newbie gains as you go through this type of training. That's how different it is and how different it is on the body. And that novelty effect is very important. This is why we phase our programs. This is why people are encouraged to try different exercises, different movements, because that novelty effect definitely kicks in. We've all experienced that. We'll do a new exercise. We suck at it, but because we suck at it, it's novel. And then we see gains accelerate uh, very quickly. Well, this is the main reason why I think that, you know, this belongs in kind of everybody's, you know, exercise regimen or library is this, this type of a routine. So you have this, this novelty. I think all of us are, are due for some sort of an interruption to what you tend to always go to. I don't care who you are, how long you've been lifting, 
We all have exercises, ways of training, modalities that we we tend to gravitate. And one of the easiest ways to stimulate, you know, growth or more results or decrease in body fat is training yourself in a novel way. If you've never built an entire eight week routine mm-hmm. around just utilizing bands. And, you know, and I'm all for like pairing that when, oh, wow, this is perfect. I'm getting ready to go on vacation for two weeks. What a great time to transition into a program. Like this instead of being all worried about, oh my God, am I going to lose gains over this, this two week vacation or with that? Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to bring my bands with me. I'm going to switch over to a band routine because I haven't done that anyways, where I did nothing but bands for six yeah. to eight weeks. Now I'm going to do that. Or you fell off for a bit, right? Like it's something like, oh, yeah, great way to come yeah, back you've, in. you've been training for a while and all of a sudden you hit a couple months where you just like haven't been in the gym like you're trying to you know build back some momentum and again back to the fact that uh it's less damage and it's something that you can continuously do and and repeat and build back the skill of lifting you know like applying this and then you know segueing that right back into the gym would be i I love that also can see it being a great bridge between two programs let's say you ran like oh amazing power lift really hard one or two rounds of that so that's you've been going heavy and hard and pushing prs with free weights great way to bridge between two uh, mm-hmm. programs like that and not lose gains to go in like that. I can see or, 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 and, and to continue progressing because of the novelty and all the other points. And, you know, he, this last one is actually one of my favorite uh, points uh, about band training, which is this. You never, ever find this simultaneously being true. I'm going to train and try to maximize my gains and simultaneously make my joints feel better and reduce my risk of injury. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. If you're max if you're pushing your gains, you're almost 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 always increasing your risk of injury. If you want to rehab, you're almost always not chasing maximum gains. Well, here's where it gets really weird. You can push intensity, frequency, yeah. volume with bands. You can crank up that dial. Simultaneously make your joints feel better and lower your risk of injury. How is this possible? Okay. First of all, everybody knows this, it's harder to hurt yourself with bands than it is with free weights. Here's one of the reasons why. You almost never use a band you can't handle because you can use a free weight you can't handle and hurt yourself, but try using a band you can't handle. You you put it down real quick because yeah. it's immediately it, it's gonna it's like it, like once a snap you. out of your hand or whatever yeah. you put it down. You end up using appropriate resistance with the band, and because the resistance curve matches your own resistance curve, you tend to pick the band that works best for your body as you do the entire rep. It's easier on the joints as well because the resistance is in one direction. Meaning if I'm doing a squat and I tip to the side a little bit, oh, that's going to hurt. Bands tend to keep you grounded at the point and kind of keep you in position. So bands, this is the only strength training tool I can think of where I could take somebody and say, we're going to simultaneously get you to push your gains. And at the end of this, your joints are going to feel better than they did uh, before. Do you that think almost th- never happens. Super unique. Do you yeah. think there's some like magic there too with the way it creates instability at the end range, which is like uh, encourages not, that squeeze? Yeah, because it's different than again free weights and so that where it, it's really easy at the end, like yeah. get cr- loose. Yeah. Totally. And so you can get away with kind of being loose in there where you have to really be stable. You have that isometric contraction. You have that squeeze at the end ranges of exercises, which is not typical. You won't Again, comparable to like if if say I'm I'm doing a an overhead carry. Yeah. Uh I'm isometrically contracting that it doesn't let me relax at all. Yeah. Right, as I'm doing and to for most people that have actually applied that in their training and then went back to like overhead pressing, it made them so much stronger. Yes. Yes. It's it, it, again, back to the other points, right? Encourages excellent form, constant tension, controlled negative. Like all those things contribute to healthier joints, lower risk of injury. But again, I'm going to go back to what I said earlier. There's almost no strength training tool that allows you to push your body and simultaneously make your joints feel better. So one of the benefits of doing a block of of band training is you'll get stronger, you'll build more muscle, and then when you go back to free weights, you're like, wow, I feel better. I feel looser. My joints feel better. Very, very unique, very special uh, trait that bands possess. Now, look, this is what we did, right? So this is a conversation we had months ago. We were talking about how band training has been relegated to beginners and convenience and how a lot of advanced people were missing out on the benefits. So Justin's like, I'm going to write a band workout for people who really want to go after it. This, by the way, is the, it's a, it's an all bands maps workout. It's also the only maps program that's every single day. You are working out hard every single day because you yep. can with bands like we explained earlier. Now this is the launch of this new program. So anytime we do a launch, we include some stuff. So here's some of the stuff that we included. First off, 
the price is gonna be discounted. So it's going to retail for $97, but because it's launching now, you get it for $67. We also created two eBooks unique that we're gonna give away for free with this program that we're gonna sell later on. One of them is the Ultimate Body Weight Training Guide. So this is an entire eBook on some of the best body weight exercises you could do. So you wanna inc include some body weight exercises, there you go. The second book, this one people are really excited about, is a cookbook. This is Quick Meals. A beautiful cookbook. Yeah, Quick yeah. Meals for Health and Fitness. So these are meals you can cook relatively quickly that are healthy. There's gluten-free options in there. There's some vegan options in there as well. Um, and uh, so it's the first cookbook that we put together here at Mind Pump. Mm -hmm. So if you enroll during this launch period, you get $30 off the retail price. For $67, you get MAPS bands. This is a two-phased, eight-week program. It's a two-month block of only band training. Again, it's an advanced workout. And then what's thrown in are those two eBooks, Ultimate Body Weight Training and Quick Meals. Uh, if you wanna sign up, you gotta go to mapsbands.com and then the code is BANDS30. BANDS30 gives you the discount plus the free eBooks. And of course it comes with a 30 day money back guarantee like all of our programs. Also, you can find us all on Instagram. So Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump Stefano, and Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. Today, we're gonna to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me, it was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 